If you were no longer affected by the judgment of others and you stopped judging yourself, would you make different choices? Why make choices in your life based on judgments instead of on your awareness of what would create the life and living you desire? Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Possibilities Coach Christine McIver. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A to Zen.fm. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inspired Choices Radio Show. I am your host, Christine McIver, and today we are going to have a very, very interesting show. And the show is called, Have You Exercised Your iPod Today? And what the hell is the iPod? Well, we're going to get into that in just a moment, and I have some really fun friends that are going to play with me today on the radio, and we're going to be talking about this at length. But before we do, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a possibilities coach, and I work with individuals and organizations to create the living and loving that they desire to have with all the possibilities available in the universe. I am an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator, Bars Facilitator, Energy Healer, Radio Show Host, and Radio Show Station Owner as of most recent, a Website Builder, and so much more. I love to be different, and I love to create in the world with everything that shows up. My programs assist individuals to bring more possibilities to actualization. If you're ready to seriously step up and claim the life that you desire, connect with me. You can email me, christine at inspiredchoices.ca, or you can uh, connect with me at my website, inspiredchoices.ca. So, we are talking uh, today about, have you exercised your iPod today? What the heck am I talking about? What is your iPod? IPOV stands for Interesting Point of View. Do you receive opinions from others or share yours and create a huge charge in your communications and creations? If you are exercising your IPOV, you just may create something even greater. This is, I love my shows, how they show up. And my radio show, I, you know, this is weird and it's wacky, but it's true. I actually communicate or my radio shows communicate with me and I'll say okay so what topic what topic and all of a sudden I'll get a hit or I'll be talking to someone and I'll hear something and I'll be going oh my gosh that's a radio show and I'll grab it and then I'll post it and I could post it two or three weeks out and before you know it when the uh, when I post it then about two or three days in advance of posting it what starts to occur it's everything. So everything in my life starts to get created, and then suddenly, okay, we've got somebody echoing. <laughs> I'm not sure who it is. And then suddenly what happens is, oh, it's not these ones. Hold on. Is it, oh, Melissa, it was you, darling. <laughs> not sure what you changed there. Um, and then suddenly what starts to occur is every I start to experience the actual title. It starts to show up as if it can be an example for for the radio show. So interesting, fun, not always great. <laughs> so today, what I wanted to share with everyone <laughs> is what is the iPod? What what has been occurring in your life? And there's been a lot of things that have been occurring that have been occurring with clients. Um, of most recent, um, and I've seen a lot of it on online, on Facebook as well. So I have with me today, Melitza. Are you there, darling? I am. Am I still echoing or am I good now? I think you're good now. Okay. I, I had expanded myself and I was like, whoo, I'm like, and apparently <laughs> I was echoing like a canyon. <laughs> it was better than that. That was the only thing I changed. I'm like, interesting. Interesting so Melissa, point of view. <laughs> <laughs> interesting that I did that. So, Melissa, yeah. can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? 
Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, I also have a show, and Christine is my friend, producer, play, playful play friend, uh, mischief companion in many ways. And uh, I have a show also on A to Zen called The Pleasure Zone. Um, you're welcome to come and listen and play with me on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And I am also a body worker. I've been doing body work for uh, many years and energy work for almost 20 years. I realized the other day I'd been saying 15, but it's actually almost 20. <laughs> uh, so I've been saying 15 for so many years. It's like, whoa, no, it's different. Um, so, yeah, my one of my greatest fun things to do in the world is facilitate change in bodies through movement and energy. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's what I love. Thank you. I also have a new friend. We ra- we met um, probably just in the last six six to eight months, I believe. Anna, are you there? I am. I am. Oh, yay. You sound so nice and clear now, Anna. <laughs> Thank you for joining this morning. Anna, do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes. So I have been studying spirituality for over 30 years altogether. And um, recently came across Access Consciousness, recently meaning about a year and a half now. And um, uh, I just love shifting energy, and this is what I want to specialize in, and I'm working toward that. So uh, nice. that's all about me for now. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you so yes. much for joining. And we also have Colleen on the line. Colleen, are you there? I am. Good morning, Christine. <laughs> Okay, you sound like you're in the back 40, Colleen. we got to get you closer to the mic. <laughs> okay, is that any better? A little bit, yes. <laughs> Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, Colleen? Sure, yeah. I'm a BARS, Access BARS uh, facilitator. And uh, very recently, an Access Body Process facilitator. Woo-hoo! How does it get any better than Woo-hoo! that? <laughs> yeah, truly, truly, truly enjoying those body processes. And I love to work with bodies and energy. And and, and I'm in the process of choosing really new things for myself and uh, new business and new creation and, and new me. Woo-hoo! New you. Woo-hoo! How's it getting any better than that? Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. And we have Nancy on the line. Nancy, are you there? Yes, I am. Welcome, Nancy. You're, you're the last one to the party, and I'm so glad you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> That's right. So, Nancy, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Oh, my. Um, well, Christine, you just put me on the spot. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell them about you. You tell me. You tell, <laughs> you, tell me I'll tell you about you, Nancy. Thank you so, so Nancy is um, Nancy is the mother to my three nieces and nephew. She's my sister-in-law. Uh, we've been um, playing together for more years than I want to share. <laughs> and uh, she's a she's a brilliant woman who um, who is a huge contribution in my life and many people's lives. She works with young children who have challenges, and uh, she's one of the most patient, understanding people I've ever met. And she's been involved with. Uh, well, Nancy usually gets involved with things I get involved with. I don't know if she's just trying to please me or if she really likes what I choose, but. <laughs> That's what goes on. Anyway, so today, I'm so glad you're all here, because it's so much more fun to play when we are playing with friends, unless you just want to play with yourself, which there's nothing wrong with that, right? That's what happens on my show. (laughs) (laughs) More about that at seven. Um, Anyways, so iPod. So I'm going to maybe start with um, how this tool has uh, shown up in my life and, and how it's been a contribution and, and where it's, it's it's interesting about the whole point of view. And then maybe each of us can kind of chime in, you know, no order necessary, just if you have an example or if you want to um, kind of what dings for you when each of us talk, that would be great. So interesting point of view is, is a tool for me that um, I didn't get for a really long time. The tools of access consciousness are are so brilliant and and I tended to go towards some of the other tools like um you know I guess being um 
trying to be kind to others and being in allowance of them. That's one big tool of access consciousness that we talk about is, is being in allowance, being in allowance of other people and, um, and also increasing awareness. And, and really wanting to be aware of what's going on around me, being aware of what, what I'm creating, being aware of my body, being aware of what's required. And as my awareness continued to increase and I was really dropping my barriers, I became more and more and more aware of what people were choosing. And to be really honest, and, and this is a little harsh, but where people were being fucking assholes... <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was getting really charged by it. And I remember the very first time this tool really, really, really was required. Um, I had just gotten back from um, my first training, my first certified facilitators training in Costa Rica in August of 2013. And I had been creating with an individual who I became – it was one of these situations, guys, and I wonder if you have the same situation, where I just um, unconditionally trusted someone. Yeah. And it's it's like I had this veil in front of my eyes that I wasn't willing to see everything. And um, before I realized it, this person had had really done some severe unkindness, okay? It felt like backstabbing. And um, it was... It was triggering me like crazy. I mean, you know, anger would set in and then depression. And then I was I was like nearly in a paranoid energy, if, if it were like thinking who else is trying to do this shit to me or, or why would people be doing this to me? You don't you, have any of you ever experienced that? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. The questions I that did. drive you crazy? Yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. Who, who else is going to do that to me question? Not really looking for, wow, am I willing to be aware of this energy? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So I was speaking with, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> brain, check in. Um, who wrote the book, the, uh, Would You Teach a Fish to Climb a Tree? Yeah. Anne Maxwell. Anne Maxwell. So I was speaking with Anne Maxwell, and she was – we were just having a conversation. She asked me a question and this whole situation came to the surface and she asked me a very simple, or she, she made a statement and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So she said to me, Christine, has your awareness outstripped your allowance? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. She said, has your awareness outstripped your allowance? And she went on to explain that I had basically dropped the veil and I was really, really starting to see where this person was operating from that I hadn't been willing to see before. And just that awareness alone started to shift it a little bit. But she said, have you been, have you been exercising interesting point of view? And I'm like, what? What? You know, I was still kind of caught up in the, oh, my God, I can't believe this is what's been going on. And she said, keep practicing interesting point of view interesting point of view when you think about her an interesting point of view that you are feeling this way interesting point of view that you're angry interesting point of view that you're feeling anything about this situation so for me that was a huge contribution to that situation and because it was so highly charged for me um what i what was required for me to was to massively exercise that for about a week, <laughs> like constantly. It felt like that's all I was doing in my head. And it was a massive contribution. And I don't always remember to use it. Oftentimes I get triggered. How many things are out there in the world that trigger all of us? And kind of our knee-jerk reaction many times is to go to the automatic frustration or anger or sadness and and to get pulled into the energy of it instead of using this amazing tool well christine i'm perfect so that never happens to me that's why i'm on the show today <laughs> uh, where's the bullshit button where's the bullshit button? <laughs> you're perfectly lovely that is true you're perfectly lovely lovely well i'm so perfect that I, I absolutely needed to hear this. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's incredible, Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, Melitza, do you have an example um, where this has been yeah. something that you've needed to use? Uh, quite often. I actually have one of the most, uh, it was actually the first tool I did use in Access. Um, I had my bars run the first time, and my mom had gone off to the bars class, did foundation level one, and then she came home with this tool, and she said, I, th I think maybe I've got a tool that you can use when you talk to your dad. So I was like, yeah, okay, well, I've tried everything else and every therapy, like, okay, let's see, what does she have? I was, like, rather skeptical and rather judgmental of the whole thing because, <laughs> please, I've tried everything. I'm the queen of I've tried everything. So uh, she goes, okay, do interesting point of view. I'm like, yeah, it's like this thing I heard in Al-Anon, blah, blah, blah. And she said, no, it's not, actually. It's interesting point of view interesting point of view you have the point of view you've already done it I'm like oh <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like all right then so um yeah one of my favorite examples is that I had this thing going on with my dad for a good my life I guess where he called me stupid all the time and I knew that these conversations were going to happen and this intensity would like come at me like uh, like a rocket ship to my head and I could I could feel it like you know when a rocket ship's about to hit you because you can perceive this like massive thing coming right mm -hmm. and and so during that my mom said my, before I got on the phone with him my mom said just see what that does like see what interesting point of view does and so just out of curiosity and for scientific study I looked at the clock while I'm on the phone with him I just did interesting point of view while this intensity was coming at me. And as I did that interesting point of view, uh, the intensity went from like that rocket ship and it started to fizzle and fizzle and fizzle and fizzle some more. And by the end of it, it was literally completely dissipated. And my dad said, oh, um, maybe that was the school of life. Instead of calling me and all my choices uh, stupid, he was like, oh, maybe that was the school of life. And I neither aligned and agreed with him or felt excited that he acknowledged me. I was just like, yeah, that's possible. And I was completely neutral. And the beauty of that was is that everything that was charged in that has not come back into play really? yet, ever. And, has, and that was four years ago. And that was a four-minute IPOV intensely on that phone call that dissipated that all those interesting points. Of, it's that he doesn't have the need to throw them at me anymore for me to align and agree with him or resist and react to him. So he has other ones that he'll bring up now and I pop them. And so it's just created a lot more space. That's so cool. for me. You know yeah. what I love what you said is that you watch the clock. So how many of us when we are in an intensity, receiving an intensity, buying into anything, it's so intense that it feels like it lasts <laughs> really really long and mm -hmm. and that it's going to take forever to change it right like uh, there was somebody we were listening to Colleen and I were listening to on the radio last night and this person was like you know it's going to take a long time and you're really going to have to practice it and blah blah, blah. it's like okay <laughs> wait a second what why are we, we we determining before we've actually begun that it's going to take a long time right but how many yeah. of us buy into that that when something is intense or something is difficult, it's going to take a long time or it's going to take something super significant in order to change it, where you just looked at the clock and literally it was four minutes of IPOV. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Melitza. That is awesome. Yeah. I can uh, provide an example myself. Uh, this is Anna. Yeah. Uh, I know I, but being a large size, I've become very aware of people's reactions to my beingness or the, you know, the way I am around people. And I do pick up points of view. I pick up points of view. This is where I, what I receive. And I find like automatically I'm doing well and suddenly I feel heavy or I feel whatever. Like I, I feel the energy shifting in my space. It's like, wow, that's an interesting point of view. And then I, I have to apply the process is not bad of it. Uh, this is my thing. But the other um, thing I want to share along this line is um, I'm the kind of person I enjoy anger. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I do, I do. So, you know, when uh, I first listened to Dane with his uh, video about interesting point of view, it's like seizing anger, right? And it's like, yeah, this is where I'm at, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> but after, you know, there were specific points in life where I was just so angry, I could just I start destroying things, right? And it's like, okay, what, how do I overcome this? Because now I have to go to work or I have to attend a meeting or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, boy, this tool came in so handy in those times. And when that, once I learned the value of that, because that taught me how valuable this is, right? Uh, then it was like, oh, okay, now I want to apply to this and this and this because it became so um, uh, essential mm-hmm. to to become level-headed and, you know, be more approachable and, you know, obviously right. an allowance of things, right? Right. So, so yeah. the whole, the whole, the whole, um, I mean, thank you, Anna, so much for that because, you know, we're often not willing to get this vulnerable on the radio and I appreciate all of you being here and, and sharing your experiences with it. And how many people is this actually going to contribute to, including all of us? <laughs> but, you know, the interesting point of view tool is really there for us not to drop our awareness or not for us to be aware of it, but to remove the trigger of it. And to remove our um, intensity around something and to give us greater space and greater choice. So we are going to go for a quick break. Um, and when we return, we're going we're gonna to dive into this a little bit more and, and talk about how we can begin to look at what's going on in the world. And we can be using this with everyone and how it impacts everyone around the world. So you are listening to Inspired Choices radio show on a to Zen.fm, And we will be right back. Stay tuned. Many of us make choices in our lives based on the past or what others think. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire in this moment? By tuning into Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to do just that. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to create the life and living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. Managing your emotions is often seen as a hard thing to do. But what if that was a contribution in order to fully awaken who you really are? If you're not achieving your dreams in any area of your life, it's because you are not connecting with the emotions behind those dreams. Not because you can't, but because you haven't been taught how to. To learn how to change all of this, contact the emotional intelligence strategist, Joanne Del Corre. Joanne can be found at www.joannedelcore.com or email joanne at joannedelcore.com. Working with Joanne, you'll receive tools and information that will bring you to a place of true, sustained emotional health and happiness for you, your kids, and your family. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program today, please call toll-free in the U.S. 815-880-8255, talk, or Canada 613-800-8736, or you can Skype us. Our Skype name is a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. How amazing is this? Creating with some wonderful women around the world. I love it. 
So today we are talking about interesting point of view. Have you exercised your iPods today? You know, it's it's really um, it's really an amazing tool of access consciousness and one of the really huge areas that you can use this in is the area around judgment. So oftentimes we are feeling the effects, and Anna, you re, you uh, referred to this too, we're feeling the effects of judgment from other people. And when we're using the IPOV um, exercise tool, we can get unlocked from that tool. And, you know, I also want to let everybody know that the tools of access consciousness, um, the, the, the foundational classes of access consciousness are the bars, foundation, and level one. And these classes, what besides the body processes that we receive during those classes, all of the things that we talk about and we and we really move through dynamically, those classes change so much of how we are at the effect of anything that we've created in our lives or anything that we're involved in in the world. And um, Melissa, you have a bars class coming up. When's your next bars class? Uh, uh, July, July 19th. July yeah, 19th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And Colleen, do you have a bars class set? No, I don't have a bar set class uh, class set, Christine. Um, but I would like to say that every uh, Wednesday I do do bars exchanges here in Aurora, which is north of the city of Toronto. Okay. But I'm always here. Uh, we're generally Wednesdays, but sometimes Tuesdays and Thursdays as well, if anybody would like to join us. Nice. How's it get any better than that? Yeah. Um, our friend Petrina, who is in Toronto, um, she's also a nurse, and she's working today, so she wasn't able to join us. But she has a bar. Her next bar class is July Monday, July the 13th. And um, she's, co she's hosting me for Foundation Level 1, which will follow... Uh, that week. So I'll be having a foundation class July 14th and 15th and then the level one class July 16th and 17th. And those classes, I I can tell you that for me, <laughs> it was so funny. When I went to my first foundation class, by noon that day, I wanted to leave. I thought, this is crazy. I don't know what they're talking about. This is all insane. And um my friend that I was with asked if I would consider staying just to the end of the day because I actually was her ride. And I said, oh, okay, fine, I'll stay till the end of the day. And by the end of the day, I was laughing at so many of the insanities that I had gotten hooked by in this reality and the tools that they began to teach me, which most certainly included IPOV, was started to change everything. And I, I am no longer at the effect of every single solitary thing around me and uh, I'm, I'm super grateful for all those so if you would like to join these classes or learn more about them you can email me Christine at inspiredchoices.ca or you can find me on the accessconsciousness.com website so interesting point of view another extension of that is interesting point of view I have that point of view so how many times ladies have you actually caught yourself angry or really triggered by someone and you're like you know you're you're mad at them and all of a sudden you're like oh I shouldn't be that way I shouldn't talk that way you know I'm not very kind or I'm stupid or you know how we judge ourselves how many times have you then clicked into oh wait a minute <laughs> interesting point of view I have that point of view only recently I started to do that. Actually, last week, right, Christine, I wrote to you something that really annoyed me on oh, Facebook. Right. And I went, such and such and such, F her, F that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, I, I'm going to go iPod that one. And uh, <laughs> what, so what that d does for me is that I get to see then that what was creating so much intensity for me that people would call anger uh, was that I was recognizing the lies that were there. And I was like, wow, that person's blatantly lying and manipulating people with lies. And it was bugging me because I was like, wow, and is that something I'm not willing to do or be? And it was like, crumb, I'm like not willing to lie. I'd like to start choosing. Even that doesn't mean I'm going to become a liar. It's like maybe even if I was willing to choose being a liar and like instead of having the interesting point of view, I could never be a liar, that I could then like pick up where the liars are with total ease 
Right. Anything you're unwilling to be, know, perceive, and receive can stick you. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we're talking about, you know, IPOV or interesting point of view, it's that something's sticking you, something's bothering you, something's, you know, really like hooking at you. And and that's a really cool um, reminder to say, okay, what's, what's here for me to learn, grow, move through, change, whatever, whatever rings for you. But whenever something is sticking you, there's something in it for you. And that's where that tool, interesting point of view, I have that point of view, can kind of give you that space to be able to look at it. Mm -hmm. And um, what a huge contribution that situation on Facebook was to you, Melita. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> and then when I wrote to you, you're like, I'm going to go iPod this and this. I'm like, oh, let's go have some iPod fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's. So what are you unwilling to exercise today that if you did, would give you greater ease in your life and living? So Nancy actually said that she picks up many people's energies very easily, and she often uses return to sender with consciousness attached. How brilliant is that? Um, she says it's amazing how the tool can reduce the amount of anxiousness or she's feeling or even a headache. And it's interesting, Nancy, that you said that about a headache because as Colleen knows, mm -hmm. Colleen was with me yesterday. Um, Colleen works with me and so she was in my space yesterday. And all day yesterday I had this intensity of a headache. One of those ones where like literally, guys, I had to go lay down for two hours. It just knocked my ass. And... That is a rarity among rarities for me. And um, then Colleen <laughs> ran my bars last night. Colleen, you, you didn't post that picture, did you? No, I still on my phone. I got home too late. <laughs> <laughs> so she's running my bars, ladies, in one of those um, zero gravity chairs. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it broke. She was at my feet, and the chair broke, and I went flying backwards. <laughs> <laughs> she took a picture of it. We're going to put it on Facebook. Bar's gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, funny. It, it was very <laughs> funny. Um, and then I went I went to bed and I woke up and I've had this intensity in my head again this morning. And then when I read what Nancy just wrote there, it started to shift. So <laughs> who does this belong to? So when you're being triggered, ladies. Do you add in, besides interesting point of view, do you add in return to sender? I, I actually do that first, and then if that doesn't work, I do the interesting point of view. Um, this is my handling on that, because I find that I pick it up, like I'm I'm uh, being transmitted to, I guess you could say, uh, and I always say return to sender, and then Okay, that that's not doing much, so let's move on here. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, interesting point of view. Is it my point of view? <laughs> and I got a visual okay. of you. I've got a visual of you with your, uh, what do you call a witch's book? What? Oh, yeah. The spell book. The spell book. <laughs> I, had a, I had a visual. I mean, I don't one. have one now, <clears throat> but I, I know I've had it at one point in the past. <laughs> Which spell do I use? Which spell do I use? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's sort of the sense. But yeah, instead I have access tools, which I put in a book. <laughs> that's, fantastic. that's fantastic. What about you, Colleen? What, what have you been finding with this tool? Well, interestingly, Christine, I'm uh, I'm like Anna. I my first choice is uh, is uh, return to sender. Who does this belong to? And of course, it's not mine. <laughs> and I, I am still consistently amazed how much stuff is just, it's not mine, just return to sender, consciousness attached. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a bit of a conversation knowing that this show was coming up today. Um, you and I had a bit of a conversation around interesting point of view because I realized it's not one that I exercise as much as I exercise return to sender. And I'm just I'm just tickled here because I'm hearing things that uh, that that are are just um, uh, chewing me. It's like, wow, this is way more than I thought it was. 
the first time I, I ever used interesting point of view, it did really, really shift whatever it was. I don't remember what it was at the time, mm -hmm. but it so shifted it that I ended up laughing my head off, like laughing my head off all the way down the 400 and all the way to Katrina's house going, you're not going to believe what I just did. <laughs> For some reason, I had it stuck in my head that, you know, you say that interesting point of view is only, you said it once, and I don't even know what made me repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. But obviously, my universe got all expanded all over the place, and I was laughing like an idiot. It was great. That's fantastic. How yeah. many times a day, I wonder if there's a statistic out there, how many times a day do we judge ourselves? Yeah. You know <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly, right? I was speaking to a brand new client yesterday and um and I could see myself in her just a few years ago and um you know, just like her, I was judging everything. You know, you get up in the morning, you look in the mirror, oh my god, you got about 50 judgments that that just go off like a rocket ship, right? And and then you put clothes on and, or you take them off and put other ones on, take those off and put other ones on and you're like, oh my God, look at this. This, this is too tight. This is too flabby. This is too short. This is too long. Like whatever. And and then you, you know, then you go to the kitchen. It's like, then you're judging yourself. You're eating too much. You're not eating enough. You don't buy enough groceries. Your kitchen's too dirty. Like you, on and on and on. It, 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 it's, it's like we have created a reality where we're using a ruler stick and we're judging every single solitary thing so um, automatic that we don't even hear it anymore. And it, it's so acceptable. When, when you hear people talking that are not in their awareness around the, the self-judgment, it is automatic for them, right? It's, it's just this... The words just fall out of their mouth. So everywhere that we're in automa automation around judgment of ourselves, can we please all destroy and create all of that times a godzillion? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, yeah. wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And what would it take for all of us to be willing to drop the veil, to really be more aware, more aware, more aware, of the judgments that we're having of ourselves, the judgments that we're having and we're perceiving of others, so that we can step into changing it. So, ladies, I'm sure like me, many of you have probably worked on this and then suddenly it got more intense, not less intense, mm -hmm. because awareness doesn't mean this is going to be light and airy-fairy. No. <laughs> awareness can be supercharged and it feels can feel like physically your body's getting a major kick in the ass. Yeah. Yep. And that's when you want to couple your, you know, awareness with your interesting point of view. So that you can get unkicked by or uncharged by anything that you've chosen mm. are choosing or anyone else is choosing. Cool. True. True. I totally agree. <laughs> you know, I find that it, that becomes very intense, particularly when I finish a class and I'm now aware of new things. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, my God, do I have to be part of this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can remember when my awareness first started to really be – where I first started to really um, – be consciously aware of my awareness. Does that make sense? Because yeah. <laughs> we're we're always aware. We're just not always consciously aware. And I can remember going, "Could I like unlearn this now, please?" Like it was <laughs> like, um, you know, I you can feel me scrunching up, right? Like, uh, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> I, uh, this isn't really what I expected. Can I go back? And you can't unknow what you know. Mm -hmm. However, you can begin to change and create something so beautifully different. Um, you know, it's like when you're facilitating with someone, you're speaking with someone, whether you do this for your business or, or not, and you say something to them and they get triggered or they get, you know, you can just feel their intensity around something. And 
when you do interesting point of view, even if you do it in your head, and I would suggest do not do it, say that out loud to someone, because <laughs> that will usually get them to say, you can just go jump in the lake. Um, yeah. <laughs> when you when you are doing interesting point of view, when you get unattached from it, or or you're not as um, tangled up in the energy of it you give it more space, you automatically allow them to have more choice around choosing out of that charge as well. And that's where we can start to change other people's realities just by how we are being and choosing to be. And that's how, ladies and gentlemen, we can change the world, even by just having a small conversation with another person. Mm -hmm. Oh. So cool. Thank you so much for saying that. I really, really appreciate that. You're welcome. So we're going to take another fast break. And when we get back, we're going to close up with everybody's thoughts. So I want you to all think of something very brilliant because you can only ever say something extremely brilliant on my show. You know that, right? (laughs) Okay. All of you should be saying right now, interesting point of view, Christine. Okay. We will be right back. (laughs) Stay tuned, everyone. Many of us make choices in our lives based on the past or what others think. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire in this moment? By tuning into Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to do just that. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to create the life and living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show. Being visible, being social, being heard. What desires are you ready to create? Would you like to take the next step to creating a potent presence on the web? Would it create more possibilities and expansion in your life? Beingvisible.ca offers website, social media, radio show creation, and more. Creating with consciousness, bringing the energy of you to your audience. Are you ready to connect with your audience clearly, regularly, and with ease? Christine MacGyver and Carol Glover work with individuals and organizations to create a powerful presence on the web. Personal attention and one-on-one training creates the ease with expanding you. Are you ready? Connect today at beingvisible.ca. What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program today, please call toll-free in the U.S., 815-880-8255, TALK, or Canada, 613-800-8736, or you can Skype us. Our Skype name is a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. So have you exercised your iPod today? We've been talking with some amazing women and who are playing with me today, Melissa, Anna, Colleen, and Nancy. And we're talking about the iPod and how using that tool can truly change your reality and everyone's reality around you. One quick example that I would like to give, and, and then I'll pass it on to the rest of you ladies, is when I was in a very intense um area with my daughter uh teenage girls you know can be pretty intense and um 
she was in that space and you know everything that I did was wrong <laughs> and um she really wanted me to know about it and when when that was going on um I would very easily get triggered and as as I'm sure a lots of parents out there would get triggered and when when that was happening uh and I was started to use the tools of access consciousness um this tool was huge for me. Now, you have to remember that you don't want to show it on your face that you're not, you know, really concerned about what someone's saying because that will actually turn up their trigger, not turn it down. So you kind of have to keep a very straight face, which is what I did. But she would be very angry. She'd be yelling at me. She would just be in that intensity for her. And I just kept saying, interesting point of view, interesting point of view, interesting point of view. And you can just feel that as you continue to say it. Interesting point of view, interesting point of view. And you start, I, I perceive the the expansion around a charge. And it gives me the space to be able to breathe. And I know that what it does when I'm doing it with another person, whether they're sad or they're angry, whatever intensity is happening for them, as I do that, it allows them to shift through it even faster. It's it's not that I'm controlling them. It's that I'm giving them the choice. And it's a big contribution for them. And then, seriously, when, when my daughter would walk away, it used to bother me for days at what she would have just said or screamed at me about. And and then when I started to use this, it was like, okay, cool. And I would just move on as if it never even occurred. So to me, that tool, this tool is priceless. It saved me a great deal of an anger and frustration and uh and creating even more chaos with this beautiful being that is my daughter. So, who else would like to share the iPods? Um, I'll share with the iPods. I actually worked with a woman the other day on uh, Skype, and she was she'd been going through stuff for over a year, and you know, going to therapists and all this stuff. And after uh, ten minutes of just using the tool iPod, she, she was astounded, like amazed at how much space that created in her universe. So, if, like, it, it works well, just like when you get densities, when you get um, anything going on that's, like, in your mind, like, for my mind, it, like, perceiving judgments of me or, you know, from others of themselves, it's just, like, interesting point of view. The, um, I don't really have a method of ABC, like if this tool doesn't work, I go to this tool. It's like whatever tool pops, I do it. And I right. find iPod pops a lot for me. Right. And, and oh gosh, I have ideas that keep jumping in my head and they're jumping out. So interesting point of view, I keep losing my thoughts. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. When when this is When anything is occurring and we're getting triggered by it, one of the big reasons that we're so triggered by it is with, because we believe that it's real. So if, if let's say you're someone who um, you're in business and you perceive someone else as being more business than you, when you believe that competition is real, then it will bother you. That's true. That's yeah. true. Right? And anything can be changed in an instant. We were listening to a show yesterday, and um, it was all about magic. It was on the playground of possibilities with uh, Tamara Yonker and Ellen Jones, and they had Glenice Hughes on, and they were talking about magic. And I, thankfully, I wrote this down. The question was, if I didn't have a point of view here, what magic could I be? Wow. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a point of view here, what magic could I be? By us practicing interesting point of view, we are creating magic. Magic is anything you desire to have change or contribute in the world. So when you're using interesting point of view, please know that you are changing something dramatically. Even if you don't see the change in someone else, know that the contribution is there. I it, I really do think that, I mean, we have so many amazing tools that we can be using from so many different modalities, 
And the tools of access consciousness are so potent. And some of the most simple tools, like the iPod, I think are underrated. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, oftentimes we're looking for the, the big magical clearing statement. It's like, fuck, these tools, like these basic, there's probably five basic tools that if that's all you ever used, plus getting your bars run once a week, it would change everything in your life. Nancy said that she often uses it, how does it get any better than that? Pretty much a looping mantra in her head. She says, I truly, it truly reduces the charge, intensity, and anxiousness that she feels when entering into a situation that does not want to be a part, she does not want to be a part of, or it is overwhelming. The universe responds with much better things always. So true. Thank you for sharing that, Nancy. So we've got interesting point of view, interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Who does that belong to? Return to sender. And how does it get any better than that? Ladies, that's five tools <laughs> right there. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So everybody out there listening to this show, <laughs> either live or in the replay, what would your life be like? What would you create in your life if you took me up on this challenge? And took those five tools and really, really made them part of your daily appetite of being. We drink water, we drink coffee, we eat food as nourishment for the body. What if you were to use these tools as the nourishment for creating the life that you desire and for the contribution you desire to be in the world? Does anything have to be really super significant a tool in order to make a massive contribution? I say, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Yes. That's yeah, I, I, I'm curious about, like, if four minutes of IPOV can change a lifetime of issues I had with my dad, what would mm-hmm. 10 minutes a day of IPOV create for me? Right? Yeah. Okay, ladies, you know what? If If not for anyone... But for um, all of us, what if we were to do this, commit to this for the next three weeks? <laughs> I'm in. Yep. You guys in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. I totally so am. Let's do a follow-up call. All right. Mm-hmm. With the five of us about what we experienced, good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter. Okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I love so, it. I am taking off, um, I'm taking off, I'm running away, I'm going to play in another place in the universe, I'm going to Barcelona, my son lives in Barcelona, and I'm leaving in, um, I don't know, what? 12 12 hours? (laughs) No, no, 36, 36 hours. (laughs) Sure, and time is an illusion anyway, so I'm (laughs) I'm going over there to play soon, and uh, so I'm going to have lots of fun practicing it in a different environment with different people in a different culture. And then I'll have some time when I come back to practice it too. But, you know, guys, if not for anyone, let's do it for us and see what yeah. we can create differently in our world. Yeah. I'm practicing, gonna... it in... practicing it in I'm Spanish. Gonna... How much fun would that be? <laughs> oh, how much fun should we have curling up with iPods? <laughs> would, would you like to curl up with your iPod today? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much for joining. This this has been wonderful and the time always goes so so quickly. Um I as I said I'll be away um next week my radio show will be a replay, but it'll be something brilliant because it always is, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I've got some lots of fun shows lined up and we will then do this um we'll do the follow up to the iPod. So did you actually exercise your iPod today? Go ahead, Anna. We have 15 seconds left. Yeah, okay. I do have one question. Um, or actually, I want to make a comment because I, it's not necessarily all the bad stuff that you can iPod. You can also iPod the, the good stuff you've decided is good that actually stops you from doing more good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. Lady, yeah, thank it's, you so much. Thank you for playing, and we will see you all another time. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. 
We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.